Hey Investor Intel, I'm here today with Dr. Ian Flint, who is among many things, but he's also a writer for Investor Intel. So Ian, I thought we should just jump right into it. Can you tell me what's going on in the graphene market today? Well, the graphene market is, uh, there's a number of applications that are being developed in, in graphene. Uh, for example, in, into plastics um, as a composite. So everyone, well, not everyone, but there's now, you can buy graphene hockey sticks, for example. Um, it's also being put into a lot of events. That's what being done, putting on in, in paints for corrosion resistance. And uh, it's also, there's also work being done putting it into things like energy storage and, and things like that. Um, the, the same problem that has been plaguing the graphene industry for many years still exists, which is quality control and a, uh, a supply of uh, um, reliable, inexpensive graphene. And until those are solved, the applications will be slow in coming. <laughs> and what about the graphite market? Like, what's going on in that market right now? Well, I assume the question is directed towards the junior mining space. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> what, what's going well, on? The, Tell us what's going the, on. The junior companies are slowly learning that to be into the graphite, you don't, you're not a miner. You're, you're a, you're a processor and uh, an intermediary to applications as opposed to a, a mine. Uh, the classic model in which uh, sort of geologists and accountants get together and, and make a company and sell it to a, a senior in graphite just doesn't work. What you need in, in graphite is to identify the application you're going to sell into, then find the graph graphite source for that. You have to be prepared to start an operating company. Uh, and you have to have a team together to do that. And I think that the junior mining space is recognizing that fact. And... There's been a number of strides forward in the industry, so I'm, it's, I think it's a positive outlook. Perfect. Which brings me to my next question. Um, what is the difference, for those of us who don't know, between um, synthetic graphite and real graphite? They're both graphite. <laughs> <laughs> okay. There's, there's, uh, synthetic graphite is made by taking petroleum coke, and putting in a high temperature furnace for a period of time, which basically converts the carbon to graphite. However, it's very fine graphite, very small size. Not all of it is converted, which means you still have some carbon left over. And the orientation of it is not as, not the orientation, but the, the stacking between the crystals isn't as tight as it is in, in natural graphite. And of course, the big difference in price is price. <laughs> because you're starting off with a really cheap source of carbon in synthetic graphic, which is great, but then you've got the energy costs. Mm. Don't expect to pay less than fifteen to twenty thousand dollars American ton for synthetic graphite. What do you think is better? Like, if you had to pick one, or does it just not matter at all? Um, natural graphite has, in terms of batteries, has much better characteristics and is cheaper. You go with natural graphite. If you can't get it, you go to synthetic. If you want control, if you want to know exactly what you're getting, synthetic. Oh, perfect. And then I guess that brings us to batteries. I know everyone's super hot and like buzzing right now around batteries, batteries, lithium ion batteries. Can you like comment on how graphene or graphite comes into play in that process? Um, well, the, the graphite is in the anodes. Um, and what happens is the uh, lithium ions get put in between the graphite, the layers between the graphite, uh, not between the flakes, but it actually within the flake. Okay. It's, it's called intercalation, and it takes six carbon atoms to store one um, lithium ion. So there's a very distinct amount of graphite that is needed in your battery to make it perform. Cool. Okay. Um, that there's a whole process that you go through in order to get that graphite. It has to have a proper surface area. It has to be able to actually, quote, intercalate that stuff. Um, it has to be the right particle size in order to get it to form the anodes properly. And there's a lot of test work involved in order to prove your product to a battery company. So a junior mining company has got to spend a lot of time and effort in order to prove that to the battery industry. The battery industry does not just buy off the shelf. 
because it takes a lot of, for them to change their process from one graphite to another because they are small differences that can affect the performance of the battery. So it's about an 18 month period between when you start testing with the battery company and you can actually sell them stuff. Oh my goodness. That's quite the process. My word. It has, it has, to, be, it has to be within a specific particle size range. Yeah. What is that size? And, can you like comment on that? Can you let us know? Uh, the best size is between 30 and 70 microns. Okay. Uh, it can take large and they reduce it using jet mill. So it all comes down to cost. Okay. As most things do come down to cost, as we all know. Exactly. <laughs> but it also has purity. It also has to do with purity because they want 99.9% .9 graphite, and very few graphites can make that great. Oh. Perfect. And I, as I mentioned earlier, Ian is many things, and one of the other things that you do work with, Guyani uh, Metals, who's one of our Investor Intel members, as well as CKR Carbon, which is another Investor Intel member. Can you just share a bit what you do with each company? Well, let's start with CKR. Um, my involvement with CKR goes back long before CKR. Um, it's, a, it's a project in Namibia called the Occam Deposit, which I actually found. Uh, about eight years ago. That's, so my involvement with that company is that uh, I found the property, uh, got people and then they may be involved. Uh, the current CEO, Arno, is, is a good friend of mine. And uh, so he is, he's now running that. Um, and uh, it's a pet project of mine. They've got <laughs> lots of graphite sitting on the ground. Um, and uh, it's relatively easy to process. So it's, uh, it's, a, it's a pet project of mine that I want to see both. Perfect. And it's, 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 a, it's a good one. Um, and I've been involved in it for about seven or eight years. Oh, perfect. And what about Guyani Metals? I know you're on the board for them. Or you're the metal, metal or I can't, I don't ever get that right, metallurgist? I'm a consultant for them, but in, yes. but in essence, I'm their metallurgist. Um, Guyani is uh, a, a manganese play out of Botswana. Now, the... Manganese is, is one of the metals that's used in um, lithium ion batteries. Um, lithium is questionable. Lithium is a metal that's in there, but so is, is manganese in one of the formulations, or nickel in another formulation. Um, the Botswana manganese was mined for many years, then was stopped you do to some sort of a, a war with South Africa, I believe. But it is an extension of the manganese deposits that are found in South Africa. And South Africa has about 70% of the world's market in, in manganese. Um, so it's a, it's a, a significant extension of, of those, those manganese deposits. And it goes for kilometers and kilometers. Uh, I spent a long time walking those, those, uh, those properties. Uh, it's an exciting play. Um, and uh, manganese is found in nodules, or it's found in veins, uh, which makes it an interesting metal to, to process. It's not hard. It's just interesting. Oh, cool. Uh, I like manganese. So I'm, I'm actually happy to be involved in that project. It's a good change from graphite. Uh, well, thank you very much, Ian, for joining us today. Uh, it was great speaking with you. And if for our Investor Intel readers and watchers, please comment below in the comment section um, and let us know your thoughts. Thanks. Thank you very much and anytime.